All right, I started recording for YouTube in the future. So we're going to be checking out uh, a board game called Evolution that is coming to digital. This was one of my favorite games that uh, my wife and I demoed at uh, Gen Con this year. So when they reached out and said they're looking for people to stream their uh, digital alpha, I was excited to do that. Um, we're just going to jump into a game. I always learn best by, by actually playing a game. So I'm going to kind of talk through some of the, the rules of the game and how the, how the gameplay plays out. So the, the demo here is, um, it's not multiplayer in the demo. The actual, uh, when the game releases, you'll be able to play with uh, up to, to four people. So I'm playing with four computer AI opponents right now. Um, so the, the, the basis of the game is uh, fairly straightforward. You have these different species that each player has in front of them. And then you get these different cards in your hand here that give your species different uh, kind of features or traits to make them better. And the way you score in the game is the more food your species eat at the end of the game, the more points there, the more points there is. So each food your species eat throughout the course of the game, the more, the more points you'll have at the end of the game. So uh, the very first thing you do at the start of the game here is you take one card from your hand and put it into the center of the pool here. And what the cards in the center of the pool do, uh, they determine how much food is gonna go into the watering hole for for the round. So you see there's numbers on the corner of each of these cards here. They determine how much, uh, how much food is gonna end up going into the center here. One of the things I really like about this game is that, I actually have one of these in my hand, I have a carnivore trait here, is that um, in addition to being a resource management game that uh, is enjoyable, uh, Evolution has some interactivity between the players, which is something you don't see in a ton of the resource management games. So in addition to uh, creating plant species to eat food out of the watering hole here, in Evolution, you can also give your species a carnivore trait here. And instead of eating food out of the watering hole, the carnivore species get to... Um, get to eat other people's species. So you get to like knock down their populations and attack them. And then the other species have, um, what's the word I'm searching for? The other species have defensive trait cards that they can put on to like kind of insulate against attacks from carnivores here. You can see the computers are kind of taking their, their turns in order here. So this person made another species here and put two traits on this one. And this person made another species and they put a trait on each of these. And then on my turn, I've got these three cards. So there's a couple different things you can do with your cards. You can either turn a card into a new species. You can put a card on your species as a trait to give it some kind of attacking or defensive or things that lets it uh, eat more often. Or you can also, there's numbers on the side of each of these species. You can see little pop-ups when I mouse over them. The population is how much the species needs to eat, and the body size is how large the species is. Um, I don't know if we're going to get paid off for it, but being a carnivore is fun, so I'm going to show that in this first game here. So I'm going to put a carnivore trait up there, and in order for a carnivore to be able to eat something, its body size needs to be able to, its body size needs to be larger than the body of the creature that's eating, so basically it can only prey on things that are smaller than it. But this pack hunting here is another trait, that says uh, add this species population to its body size to serve its attack. So we're actually gonna have like this really sweet carnivore here to start. So I'm gonna go ahead and slide this card up here and then I'm gonna put the scavenger, I discard this card to increase the population here. So this is a carnivore with pack hunting. So it's gonna be able to attack things that have body size uh, three, three or less. I actually really like the climate expansion. We've been playing that um, when you're taking your turns here, or like, let's say I decide I don't want to do that, there's an undo button where I can undo the things that I take for the turn, but I'm pretty confident that I want to do that and start eating my opponents, so I end my turn, and then these last two people take their turns, and now everyone flips their cards up, and you can see my, my little thing grew, grew claws and fangs here, because it's now a carnivore. You flip over and see how much food goes into the center, so there's 16 pieces of food here. You can see... My opponents, we can see what tiny traits they put on. So this thing has cooperation on it. So when it, it when it ate a food, it fed the thing next to it. And it has hard shells, so it has plus four body size for defense. Um, this guy has, has horns. So when something attacks this, it loses a population size. So when I mouse over my carnivore here, 
it kind of lights up and you can see it tells me that I can attack this guy and this guy for free with that light uh, yellow area that's going around it. And I can attack this guy if I want, but the gray circle around it means that I'd have to suffer some kind of penalty for doing so. Um, the important thing to know when you're playing a carnivore is that because this guy's already eaten a food up here, um, this guy is going to get to score that point. So it's advantageous for me to eat this this guy first because then they don't get to score a point from that. And you see their species goes extinct because I ate their only population there. And then it comes back around to my turn again. And now I get to go ahead and gobble, gobble that guy up there. And now my guys collected... Collected two points of uh, collected two points of food, and at the end of the round, everyone collects their food. Need to deal new cards out. If you don't use all of your cards in a single go round, you get to um, what's the word I'm searching for? You get to hold them over for till next turn. Yeah, they sent out invites to a bunch of people that stream on Twitch to demo the client, and actually. Um, if you, their Kickstarter is going for another 19 days and the alpha is going to be open to the public shortly shortly after that, I believe. So if you kickstart on there, you'll be able to get access to this uh, next month, I believe it is. It's going to be on Steam for the, it's going to be on Steam for the computer and then on Android and OS X. I believe the mobiles, the mobile versions don't start until early 2018 though. But you'll be able to have this on Steam before the end of the year if you back it. So what do I want to do here? So I got to put a card in here. And this is kind of interesting too. So like, because I have a carnivore here, I'm kind of incentivized to not, um, I'm kind of incentivized to not, um, not put a lot of food in the middle, which I think is what we're going to do here. Yeah, the, the digital version has been really slick. Um, it's really annoying that this person is climbing on both of these, so I can't eat them yet. Um, I think I want to hold one of these scavenger cards, so that way, when I create another species... Actually, I might want to create another species now, and then put scavenger on it. Scavenger lets this... Well, hmm. I guess I could just create another species and just use those to eat plant food. It's probably pretty unlikely that either of the computers are going to move into being a carnivore. Um... Yeah, I'm actually gonna, I'm gonna expand a little bit here so I can discard cards to turn these into two new species. And then, so because I have pack hunting on here, increasing the population makes it better at attacking as well. But I'm actually not 100% sure that this thing's gonna be able to attack anything necessarily. I think I'm gonna increase the population. We'll see. If, you're, if your species don't get to eat, they starve and die off. So if I don't get to feed all of these, I'm gonna have to hopefully... Hopefully this guy is going to be going to be edible. This guy too. All right, so we flip over and see how much food gets added to the center. Not a lot of food got added. All right, so this guy has warning call, which says I can't attack this unless I have ambush. This is actually the only guy I can eat here. But conveniently... Conveniently... Um, when you, when your carnivores eat something, they get a food for each body size this thing has. So, I get to go ahead and gobble this guy up, which eats for two. Because, um, you'll notice too, when I mouse over my carnivore, my other species light up. So, like, I can have my carnivore eat my other plant, plant guys. Which might actually happen. So, like... I have to choose here. Do I want this carnivore to eat this? And this has horns on it, so I'll lose a population to do so. Or do I just want it to eat one of my two species that I put out this turn? I could I could eat the warning call guy. That's probably better because this leaves me an extra trait card for next turn, right? And now, the number of species you have increases the number of cards you draw each turn here. So you'll see, I drew more cards here because I have more species in play. So this round, I got six new cards to work with as opposed to four because I added two species to the mix. Um, put this four in here. Actually, so something that's relevant to... 
something that's relevant to so new games are always kind of kind of difficult to keep up with a little bit i'm trying to explain as we go there's a little video here talking about the breakdown of how to play i don't think anyone else is going to evolve into a carnivore so i don't really think i need these defensive traits i'm gonna put less food in the middle this time around because um, I'm actually the first player, so I'm going to get to eat before before anyone else does. So this trait is interesting. It says, if add one population, this there's a food in the watering hole at the, at the start of the turn. So because there's food in here, if I put this fertile trait on my guy here, it's going to get a free population. So putting the trait on here is kind of better than discarding for the population. It also has long neck, so it gets. I can put long neck on here, so it gets to eat for free basically every turn, which is nice. And then I think I'm just going to go ahead and up the population on here a whole bunch. Because if I up the population on here a whole bunch, I can eat this guy with horns and not really feel bad about it. And then once I eat this guy with horns, that gets rid of the warning call, and then I can eat this one. Ooh, they took the horns off of here. I wonder if they put climbing or something on it. It'd be really bad if this guy ends up starving. <laughs> Let's see my guy have another population. What do they put on here? They put intelligence. This species... Oh, that's not very good for them. Huh. Well, this is... This is now free eats over here. So, my carnivore is going to destroy these guys. So, we gobble that up. And then when their species dies, my opponent gets to draw extra cards for every trait card on it. But now I get to eat this one for free because my because this person doesn't have any defensive traits on it. Um, I think I'd actually rather eat this one, though, because they haven't eaten with it yet. So I'm going to save some food in the watering hole for my herbivores here. This guy. That, that one goes away. And then everyone else is eaten, so I just get to keep eating until I'm full. Yeah, the, the, I really I really enjoy the gameplay in this game a lot. We've been this has definitely been like the number one game we've been playing at our our game night since we started um What's the word I'm searching for? Since we got back from Gen Con. Searching for. Ambush negates warning call. So I got to throw some food in the middle. And now the flip side of this is because I'm the last one to eat now, I probably want to put more food in the middle so that way I make sure that these things get fed. So these, both of these dorks have climbing, so I can't actually eat any of those, which kind of sucks. I'm probably going to eat fine over here, though. It's almost as good as... That game was so bad. I'm going to put fat tissue. So fat tissue kind of lets you store extra food. So this guy's going to get to eat a ton. And then it's going to store some extra cereal. Although I guess I need to make the body size a little bit bigger if I want to do that, huh? Just... Just make this like a super carnivore. You can probably even attack through hard shells now. A lot of food in the middle. And so the feeding kind of goes in a circle here. So I can mouse over this. You can see this guy here has a trait called burrowing. So it can't be attacked once it's fully fed. So that means I really want to eat this guy first. Because once he gets a chance to feed with that, I'm not going to be able to attack it anymore. So it comes back to me. You want to kind of look and see there's 16 food in the watering hole here and only four more things can eat. So I'm not really worried about not being able to feed my things. Let's just keep eating this. The, the car, I, we haven't had a game in paper yet where the carnivore has been that good. And like hitting the early pack hunting in this game was just so insane. I've eaten this person the least out of everyone. So I think I want to, I want to hammer them because I believe they have the most points. And you can see this carnivore 
even get, even gets to keep eating here because it's got the body fat trait on it. So this guy gets to go up here and eat this Dorko out of house and home. And then he gets to eat this one. And now my herbivores get to go ahead and eat from the watering hole here. So it's like I'm going to win this game by a lot. I don't know if the AI are smart enough to do this, but a lot of the time when like one person gets really far ahead in a game of uh, paper um, evolution, you often, um, man, that's going to be sweet. All right. You, you often, um, you often see people start to gang up on them. So that way uh, they don't, they don't stay too far ahead. So the scavenger mechanics, act, the scavenger card is actually really good with my other carnivores. Scavenger um, makes it so when a carnivore attacks, this thing gets to eat. So, and my my carnivore is just like going ham on this board. So if I put scavenger cards in both of these, they're going to get to eat. They're going to get to eat extra here. And then I'm going to go ahead and increase the population on this so they can eat more. So that means if my scavenger eats, everyone eats. So we're just going to like combo through them basically. I think that's good. We'll make this guy a little bit bigger. And this guy gets fed four fed four at the start from his fat tissue coming up. Alright. Yeah, look at that. My guy. There was not a lot of food added to the center. I'm glad I hit Scavenger this round. Um, so what do I want to eat for? First. I want to I want to kill the guys with burrowing first because they're gonna hide so I, like I already can't attack this one here so I think I want to eat well I guess this can only grab this is foraging so it'll grab two foods so yeah let's eat let's eat that one to start and then when this eats my scavenger my scavenger gets to eat as well, so let's go ahead and have this guy finish this one off, which gives him food, which feeds both of these because they're scavengers. My species are so good, they work together. I wonder if this carnivore is a human because they're all working together nicely, and then this guy is going to get to burrow down here in a second. So let's eat that one. Oh, geez, I can eat this one too now. I want to eat that one. He's got a lot of trait cards on that one, so let's just gobble him up. And then I've got exactly two spots left on my... You've created Americans. Yep, this is... We're li literally created Americans. And so the games in evolution keep going around until the deck runs out. You can see here there's 25 cards left in the deck. So the more species people have, the quicker the rounds run out because the more species you have, the quicker cards get drawn. So next round is actually going to be the last round because... Um, what's the word I'm searching for? Because I'm actually going to put a big card in here, I think. Actually, I could create another species here and put scavenger on it as well. That's probably pretty a pretty good idea. I did also find that intelligence though here, and what intelligence does is it lets me discard a card to negate a defensive trait on one of my one of my opponent's things. You should put in a minus two. That's fair. I, I thought about maybe putting this intelligence on something. I feel like I wouldn't mind putting intelligence on this and just like going ham on this side of the board. Yeah, so, huh. I might trade out pack hunting for the intelligence because then I could just gobble through. 
So like there's one food left in here, so both of these are gonna go increase by population. So I probably don't need another species. I could just like hold cards in my hand for, yeah, I'm gonna replace pack hunting with intelligence and I'm gonna put one more population into here. So that way both of these have five. And then I'm gonna hold these cards that way I can discard them to intelligence to eat my opponent's things. Yeah, that's true. A lot of their things are smaller. I guess there aren't. There's one hard shell here. Ooh, I wonder. I wonder if this is about to become a carnivore here. Yep. That's kind of scary. All right. So my my guys are actually really vulnerable to this. Are actually really vulnerable to this guy. Um, oh, and he's a climber too. Well, that's scary. This guy's probably gonna get some vengeance and gobble up my my guys here. Um, I guess I could kill this. I could attack this myself. Because I could ignore the climbing by discarding a card. I think that's what I want to do. Because if I make this thing smaller, it's going to get to eat less. Gankophobia! With the 15-month resubscription. Thank you for the continued support. I do appreciate it. Welcome back. Yeah, I think... I think I want to attack him first. And then I'll discard warning call to do so. Yep, and you can see here, it's attacking, it's attacking my species like I thought it was. So, yeah, I'm gonna go ahead and attack this again, discarding a fat tissue here. So that way this only gets, because every time this gets attacked, its population goes down. So that means it eats less. There. So I still, still did okay here. I lost a couple of population, but we're still, still pretty far ahead. And you can see this guy here, the watering hole ran out of food this go round. So this person lost the population on there. This is the last round. Huh. Yeah, I think I'm just gonna throw a zero in here because I really, I don't need... And I still have this scavenger here. So... Yeah, honestly? Um... Yeah, the client the client is really slick, especially for an alpha. Like, this is this is an early release, so... Oh, I've got, I've got it blocked. Sorry, yeah, I, I forgot there was relevant. I'm like, it's small. Yep, yeah, it says right, right here, 52. It was blocked by the little, the little thing I had in the corner. That was my bad. I, I forgot that the, it showed that there. When I was setting this up, I didn't have any food. So, yeah, I currently have 52, which is a pretty good score. Um, I'm first player, so I'm going to get to eat this guy before anything else happens. So I think I actually want to want to go deep and create another species with scavenger in this last round. So, yeah, so I think I'm going to put up a fourth... A fourth species here, put scavenger on it, and then put a couple of t ticks into the population here. And then, like, hold these last two cards so I can discard them to intelligence here. <sighs> they made this thing. This thing's very large. another carnivore coming out here there's another oh geez everyone okay the bots the bots got smart they are all of my species i was basically like relying on the fact that i was the only carnivore to protect all of these species here and now i am very much not the only carnivore here um i think i'm gonna start by attacking this guy since it's free yeah i mean i've got a bunch of free eats here for them so it makes sense that they're gonna jump on the carnivore train what doesn't quite make sense is that, although I guess they do have to try and feed their herbivores, right? So because all of my guys are scavengers, I don't have to worry about fighting for food in the center here. Stop eating my species! So this guy, at the end of the game, you get bonus points for how many... Um, you basically get bonus points for how many population and different species you have. 
So... It's possible I should have put more traits on these. I did get to eat with these fully, but, like, these two, these two, uh... Carnivores are gonna eat through these and, like, take me off of extra points at the end of the game because of it. Yeah, so they're gonna... Between these two, I wouldn't be surprised if they'd eat this up. Oh, they're attacking different ones, sure. That's good for me. Let's see if this recognizes... Yeah, it recognized that it should kill that to give me less points. I think I'm still gonna win. We'll see here. So the end of the game, we all get our final feeding points here. They lose some population because they were hungry. All my points slide off into my baggie here. And then I get 10 extra points for population. And then... Yeah, look at that. Stompied the AI. You get 10 extra points for population, 5 for traits, and I had 70, 74 food. Oh, it's not... It wasn't quite... The, I guess it was almost 2x, wasn't it? AI4. Which one was AI4? That was this guy over here. I guess that was the one that was in second place. Think I'm still gonna win. Let's play. Let's play another round here. And the gameplay is pretty quick too. You can see with four, four people there. And the AI do take their turns pretty instantaneously, which helps a little bit. So with actual humans, the gameplay will be, be a little bit slower. But, like, with the 4 AI there and me stopping to explain, like, the things that I'm doing, I played that entire game in 26 minutes. So, like, with 4 actual people, about 30 to 40, 45 minutes is the average length of a game. Um, starting player is here, so I'm going to eat almost last. So I think I'm going to put in a high, f a high food card here. I'm probably going to put fat tissue on my guy, too, so it can store up some extras. So how how evolution works here for those of you that are just joining us, um, there's the the gameplay is broken down into a couple of rounds. The first part of the round was me putting that card into the center. Everyone puts a card into the center at the start, and what that card does is it determines how much food goes into the watering hole. So for instance, this fat tissue would have added three. This ambush would have actually taken a food out of the watering hole. This burrowing would add three. Now, once everyone puts the card in, people get to use the remaining cards in their hand to kind of uh, upgrade and adapt their species. So, um, what that means is I can discard these cards to do a couple different things. The first is I can put it on here as a trait. So, I'm going to put fat tissue as a trait on my, on my species here. I can also discard these cards to create new species, which I'm actually going to do as well. And finally, I can discard this card to either increase the population size, which is how much this thing needs to eat every round, or to increase the body size, which is how large this species is. And larger body size matters for things like the carnivore that you saw at the end of last game. And the carnivores allow you to attack other species, or if you're an herbivore and you're larger, a carnivore has to be larger than you in order to attack. Um, body size also has relevance with this fat tissue, so I'm actually going to upgrade the body size on this again. And you can see here, the games are kind of, uh, dynamic in evolution because the strategies that you implement are going to vary from game to game based on the cards that you have in your hand. So, last game, I went into a carnivore very early because I, um, had a carnivore and pack hunting in my hand, but this game, I wasn't able to move into carnivore right away because I didn't have those cards. You can see now we take turns going around in the circle here and we all feed. You'll notice we skipped this player because each of their populations are completely fed. I'll go ahead and feed my other guy here. So each of my populations are completely fed. And now I get to take some two extra food with this guy for my fat tissue. So we'll kind of store those for later. Round two. The number of cards you're dealt at the beginning of each round vary based on the number of um, species that you have. So having more species means that you're going to be able to um, more species means that you'll be able to draw more cards. So, huh, so we found a carnivore card. I might. I really like playing carnivores. Especially, like, playing against the computers here is great because, like, when you're playing a carnivore in real life, sometimes there's some feel-bads if you're just, like, devouring someone. But here, the computers can't feel bad, so I just get to, like, be a carnivore and devour them. I think I still want to put a bunch of food in the middle because this is an herbivore for now. 
Although I guess I'm second player, so like, I probably am gonna get to feed this just fine. Yep. Yeah, so if you put this on, sorry, I should mention that. So this is the, this is the, uh, their digital alpha for their, their Kickstarter here. And you can, uh, check that out. It's going to go into beta later this year for the PC. And I believe it'll be on mobile, uh, early next year. It's going to support, uh, Android and iOS. If you kickstart it, you get access to the beta when that goes, when that goes live. So I think I want to turn this guy into a carnivore and just start gobbling people up. I can slide a long neck onto here, and I think I'm just going to increase my body size on here. I only have one population on this for now, but increasing my body size means I'm going to be able to attack more things, and also my body size makes my fat tissue more potent, so I can kind of store up food for my population is larger. Rawr. So, what can this attack? Anything? There is not a lot of food in the middle. All right. Um, there's actually not a lot for this carnivore to attack. I don't think it mentioned whether or not they were going to be added. I would be surprised if they didn't. Like, the Kickstarter is already funded, so it seems like it was a pretty, a pretty good success. Well, I don't, I'm not one of the developers of this game, so I don't want to, I don't want to talk about it. Like, I know, I know what's going on. So the horns I mean I have to eat a population to, so yeah, so I'm actually not going to attack with this because I really don't want to attack my own thing. So their two species actually died off because there wasn't enough food in the watering hole. They kind of overextended and got punished for it. Hopefully I find a climbing card so I can eat these stupid climbers. So I'm first player here, so I'm actually just going to put a one, a one pointer in the center because my guys don't really need food. So I'm going to go ahead and put foraging on here. So whenever, whenever this, uh, takes food, it takes just foraging and long neck stack. I'm pretty sure this receives one free plant food. I'm not sure if that's actually the case or not. I feel like I should know if that's the case before I do that. I'm going to put Scavenger on here, actually, because I'm probably, I'm probably going to be eating with this. And then, I think this is going to be a low food in the watering hole game, so I don't think I'm going to put, I don't think I'm going to put that on there. I'm going to put an extra body size in there, and then I'm going to put a couple of population increases on here so it can afford to attack these horned things a little bit. This player here is actually getting set up really well, and they're pretty defensive against these carnivores. They've got warning calls, which prevent it from being attacked unless they have ambush. So, and these warning call each other. Ooh, and there's another carnivore coming out. And it's got fat tissue. This thing's going to gobble the board up. Wow! So, everyone put in very little food. So there's zero food in the watering hole, so all of these herbivores without scavenger are just gonna die. Except for this one with the long deck. Wow, that's that's pretty brutal. Now this is my only free attack, so I guess I'll eat that one. Oh, this has scavenger too. Okay. That makes sense. Um Huh. So my opponent's going to get to eat this anyways because they have fat tissue here. So I'm actually just going to eat my own species because my opponent's going to eat it anyways. So I might as well take some of the food off of it. And unlike the last game, I am I am not winning this one. Um, so I could attack this one, but it has horns. Is that worth it? I guess it gives me two food and it's going to kill this off. Oh, and once I eat this, this is no longer protected by warning call. So that's pretty good. So now they can eat it, 
And then I can eat this? Oh, yeah, they just got bodied. Gobble, gobble. So you can see there, when their species die off, um, when their species die off, you get cards back for every trait that was on it. So there, there's some of a catch-up mechanic, but they are definitely pretty far behind. And I'm pretty far behind this player here, too, because they have three species, so they got a bunch of extra... bunch of extra things there. So I gotta kinda strategize and figure out what the what the plan is. I hit climbing here. Yeah, the, the AI on the left is doing doing good work. I'm last here, which is kind of convenient for I think I'm gonna put cooperation in here. And now, because I'm last, there's actually some strategical value to going last because all of these players have to take their actions before I do anything. So I get to kind of see, like, what species they're setting up and how large they are. And I can kind of make predictions based on how big they make them on what kind of things they might be doing, which can kind of let me make kind of educated guesses on how I want to set my things up. So I think I want to put climbing on here so I can eat this. And then something worth noting here, my opponent just increased this to body size six, but thankfully climbing is going to, climbing is an offensive and defensive trait. So basically this thing is not, is going to get, um, is going to be defended from my opponent's thing here. So I, I might just make this population really large so I can, so I can collect as much food as possible here. I think I'm gonna hold this pack hunting in case I need it for later. Yeah, I'm gonna do that. So the amount of food you eat per turn is basically how many points you score at the end of the game. So if you have more population, you get to eat more per turn. Ooh. Ooh, and this is... Getting climbing on here was great because actually all the things I could eat are climbers. So um, when I eat this, this man, this top player is just getting completely dumpstered. But I eat this... It exposes both of their other guys to this AI's carnivore as well. <laughs> so he's just gonna gobble them up. Yeah, I mean, gobble gobble. And then we, I kind of dumpstered this guy enough, so I'm going to attack this one here, I think. Kind of take this player down some points. Any interest in poker? No, not really. I played a lot of poker in college, but to play poker optimally, like... You need to, be, you, it involves a lot of waiting. What's the win condition of this game? So the way the game works out, you score points based on how much food your species eat every round. And you can see there's a number of cards listed in the deck here. Um, when the deck runs out, that starts the final round of gameplay. And at the end of gameplay, you score a point for each piece of food that you've eaten. And you score a point for every trait on a species that survives at the end, as well as every population on a species that survives at the end. Ambush is actually a great hit here. So ambush means... I guess it's not that great. I say ambush means I could technically start attacking over here, but this has body size 6, which means I really can't. I'm last, so I'm going to put in a four here. I think I'm going to start a new species this round so I can start eating some more food. So symbiosis is a defensive mechanic that allows my species to not be attacked if it's smaller than the species to the right of it. I can't eat his smaller one because it's got... Oh, I could... If I put ambush on here, I could eat this little guy. Yeah. But I can't eat this big one, so I don't think it's worth putting a trait on just to, just to eat this guy. This is a game called Evolution. It's a board game that's getting a digital form pretty soon. 
This is an early iteration of their digital form. So I'm put symbiosis on here. And then I think, oh geez. So you can see, and again, I said, there's strategic value to paying attention to what the other people are doing. Carnivores are thriving in this game and this AI has recognized that. You can see this thing has body size six and one trait. So there's a very, very good possibility that the one trait on this thing is a, is a carnivore. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and put, I think I'm just gonna up the population on this guy. And then they go. Yep. Thankfully, my Dorko's got climbing over here, so these larger carnivores can't actually attack this guy. And like, if you think about the Vorthos of this game, like what what the mechanics mean, like this guy. Ooh. Oh, that's actually really bad. My carnivore actually can't eat anything here because you want a different show? Okay. Which show do you want on the TV? Might need a diaper change too. Yeah, in a second. You want animal mechanicals? So this guy can't eat anything because this guy has burrowing. So once it's fully fed, it can't be attacked. And this guy has warning call. So this guy gets warned. So this guy's actually going to lose a population this round, which kind of sucks. That being said, my herbivore can sit here and eat. There's actually only two, two of us with herbivores sitting here eating. And actually, this guy, neither of these guys could attack anything. So that guy, that species dies off. I scored a good amount of food that round, but this this AI player is just like dumpstering all of us. Got a good good setup here. All right, so what am I doing here? Um, I'm second player, so I probably don't need to put a ton of food in here. I'm going to throw fertile on here so that way um, so that way this gets a free population because there's food in the watering hole to start here. And I'm just going to increase the body size on this guy by, by two so that way it's more likely to be able to attack things. This, this AI is just like going super wide here because they've got all these defensive traits. Hopefully this guy's going to be able to eat. Why can't he eat? Oh, God. Oh, no. Oh, no. I'm going to get completely destroyed this game. So this guy's got warning call on him to protect this guy. And this guy's got symbiosis and this guy's bigger, so I just can't attack. All right. Well, this species is about to die. I wonder if I'm even going to be in second this game. And my Dorko, he's gonna starve. The entire population's gonna starve, Marty. It's so sad. It's so sad. He didn't, he didn't evolve fast enough, so he's going to die. And then, like the the, the scariest thing is, because that died, this no longer has a larger guy with symbiosis to protect it. In a move that surprises no one, uh, this AI over here that I said was dumpstering everyone throughout that game uh, did in fact dumpster us at the end. It had almost double my points. I scraped in at second, but uh, yep. Uh, I'll be right back. I need to change a diaper really quick, and then we're gonna play. Uh, we're gonna play one more game, maybe two. Thanks for thanks for watching, folks. Check it out. D Elvolutions Digital Alpha. You can uh, learn more about the game with these two links here. Learn. Uh, oh the wrong how to how to evolution so a link there to the kickstarter for this game for just four bucks you can get on the digital version and then a link to how to play the game too if you're interested in learning a little bit more about that
What is this that I can read? Your brother has the cup. Here, grab your pants and I'll be putting them back on. Alright, so for those of you that are just joining us, this is a game called uh, Evolution. It is a board game that my wife and I demoed at Gen Con this year that I really enjoyed playing. And they are working on a digital variation of the, of the game here that I've been enjoying a lot. So... Um, the basis of the game is you're creating these species with these different trait cards that you have, and you need to collect food to feed them from the water and coal. So at its core, it's a resource management game like a lot of board games. Um, one of the axes I really like that it implements, though, is that unlike um, a lot of resource management games, you, there's interaction between the different players in the game. So you're able to, one of the traits that you can put on your species that you can draw out of the stack of trait cards here is a... Um, a trait called uh, becoming a carnivore. So if you're a carnivore, you get to eat other players' species instead of uh, instead of a uh, instead of feeding from the watering hole in the meadow. Remember that opponent that fetched around Shadow Doubt? Spooky suck. Very traumatic. With the 313 subscription, thank you for the continued support. Welcome back. I do appreciate it. Hanging out playing some board games, a, a digital board game this afternoon. So the very first thing we do in a turn is I have to discard one of these cards to the middle in order to put some food in the center. So the number in the corner determines how much food there is. Sometimes there's strategy to putting negative numbers into the center. For instance, if you're a carnivore, you don't need to feed out of the center and you want other people's species to starve. Uh, that being said, I'm actually the last player here. The starting player chip is over here. So I'm gonna go ahead and put in this five cost one. So that way the most food possible gets in. You can swap traits out once you've played them. So there's a maximum of three traits per thing, but you can um, add additional traits uh, to them. So fat tissue is actually a really good trait. It uh, it lets me store extra food on here. And then you can see here, a lot of other people went ahead and added additional species here. Oh, it is it is stuck, isn't it? I saw you tipping it upside down. It's like, what are you doing, kid? This water cup is stuck. This water cup's silly. There you go. You don't need to tip it up. There you go. All right. So. Yeah, correct. Yep. So, like, if you don't need a trait anymore, or, like, for instance, let's say you're a carnivore, and all of a sudden it's not profitable for you to be a carnivore anymore. You can stop being a carnivore, basically. So, the number of species you have... Um, increases uh, the amount of cards you get each round. So I'm going to try and expand, double expand here too, like this player did. There's a slight danger that there won't be enough food in the center, and I'm not going to get to feed all of these. But sweet, they all put in a lot of cards to start. Usually it makes sense that a lot of people put in a lot of food to start. So getting kind of more species on the board gets dangerous if carnivores start popping up quickly, but um, it does give you a possible advantage because we can find things like carnivores faster if I get more cards. So now I'm gonna get to draw, I believe it's six cards this round. Yep, so I get three plus the number of species I control. I have to throw a card in the center here. Huh. So, I kind of want a lot of these cards, I don't know. I don't. So, my, I I want to put in a high number so there's plenty of food to feed my stuff. But fer fertile foraging and cooperation are all like kind of powerful cards. I think I'm actually going to be kind of a Scrooge and throw in this fat tissue. So I'm going to put fertile on here, which gives it a free population. And I'm going to put foraging on here as well, so when it eats, am I going to do that? Am I going to put cooperation on here? Cooperation says when this eats, it shares a food to the right. I kind of don't mind that. Do I want fertile on that one? You can undo the things you trade out too. I kind of want to put cooperation and foraging on here and then throw fertile on this guy. And then I could discard a trait here to increase the pop discard cards to make the population bigger. It's going to be kind of scary. I could look and see uh, the starting players here. So this player's gone. And this player's gone. You can see here, none of them increase the body size of any of their things. So it's pretty unlikely that any of these three players are going to be a carnivore. 
this this round so i think i'm a little bit safe to just kind of move in and basically make my population larger without trying to put in defensive traits this guy could still go and become a carnivore if they wanted potentially nope no carnivores it looks like see how much food got put in i only put in zero uh, not that much food got in so good chance some of these some of these species starve here so I want to feed this guy first because he grabs an extra food and then he grabs a food to send over to the buddy next to him. Okay, it looks like we're not going to have anything starve, which is great. And that, in addition to nothing starving being great, it means there's going to be food left over in the watering hole. Exactly one, which means my fertile is going to give me another population for free next turn. You want your pants? Get your pants. I will put them on. No, those are those are those are my pants, bud. These are your pants. Come here. <laughs> All right. So I have a carnivore card here, which is pretty good. Maybe it's pretty good. We can look around the board and kind of determine how good is this carnivore card based on like what other people have going on. Why can't he wear my pants, right? They're a little bit large. So this guy actually doesn't have any defense on it. This guy doesn't have any defense on it. This guy's got horns. This guy's a climber. This guy's got a warning call protecting him. I think it's going to be okay to move into a carnivore on here. That being said, I'm going to throw a hard shell in the middle so that way my herbivores can eat successfully, hopefully. So I'm going to go ahead and put a carnivore here. Oh, well, I guess... Oh, they got rid of the climbing on here. That's good for me. I'm going to put a card there. I'm going to put warning call here. So it... Do I want to put warning call here? I don't actually know. No. Oh, oh, I clicked end turn instead of... <laughs> I was talking. Uh, this game will be on Steam. It's currently on... Uh, it's currently on Kickstarter. <laughs> <laughs> we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna embarrass out of that one there so <laughs> um anywho this game is on um it's on kickstarter currently here so there's a link a link in chat here if you want to back it on Kickstarter. The Kickstarter is going for another 19 days. And then um, the version, you'll gain access to the, the beta on Steam shortly after the Kickstarter uh, closes out. And then the mobile versions will go live uh, early next year, I believe it is. Um, if, if, if you're used to paying for TCGs or other things, like it's really pretty cheap. They have a, they have a, a thing on their Kickstarter that's just like four bucks to gain access to the digital copy when it comes out. So the game's a lot of fun. It's a good multiplayer game. This is something I could see sitting around playing with friends on our phones when we wait in line for stuff. The games don't take terribly long. It's the type of game where like you could all stop and then like do something else and then come back to it. The game plays a lot of fun. It's a fun resource management game and I like the dynamic uh, interactivity of it with uh, how the cards are going. Well, that last game, I accidentally hit end turn instead of undo because I was looking at my, I was looking at Jacob and we uh, punted right on, right on out of there. Uh, at any rate, I hope you enjoyed the demo, and be sure to check out their uh, their Kickstarter page. You think this is something you might want to check out? Uh, peace, folks. I'm gonna call it an afternoon. And remember, if you didn't see all of today's demo, uh, check it out on my YouTube page. It'll get uploaded there, uploaded there very shortly.